Hey, I'm Renee, but you can call me Blade, and this is the Oh My God Show, and we are reading through the Bible, and we are in the book of Leviticus. Now, the Bible is divided into two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. It has a total of 66 books. Now, each book is divided into chapters and verses. Now, the Bible has the ability to change your life because certainly it has changed mine. Now, let's get right into it. In chapter 25, verse 1, it says, The Lord said to Moses at Mount Sinai, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you enter the land I am going to give you, the land itself must observe a Sabbath to the Lord. For six years sow your fields, and for six years prune your vineyards and gather their crops. But in the seventh year the land is to have a year of Sabbath rest, a Sabbath to the Lord. Do not sow your fields or prune your vineyards. Do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the grapes of your untended vines. The land is to have a year of rest. Whatever the land yields during the Sabbath year will be food for you, for yourself, your male and female servants, and the hired worker and temporary resident who live among you, as well as for your livestock and wild animals in your land. Whatever the land produces may be eaten. In verse 8, it says, Count of seven Sabbath years, seven times seven years so that the seven sabbath years amount to a period of 49 years then have the trumpet sounded everywhere on the 10th day of the seventh month on the day of atonement sound the trumpet throughout your land in verse 10 it says consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants, it shall be a jubilee for you. Each of you is to return to your family, is to return to your family property and to your own clan. The 50th year shall be a jubilee for you. Do not sow and do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the untended vines, for it is a jubilee and it is to be holy for you. Eat only what is taken directly from the fields. In this year of Jubilee, everyone is to return to their own property. If you sell land to any of your own people or buy land from them, do not take advantage of each other. You are to buy from your own people on the basis of the number of years since the Jubilee, and they are to sell to you on the basis of the number of years left for harvesting crops. When the years are many, you are to increase the price, and when the years are few, you are to decrease the price, because what is really being sold to you is the number of crops. Do not take advantage of each other, but fear your God. I am the Lord your God. In verse 18, it says, follow my decrees and be careful to obey my laws, and you will live safely in the land. Then the land will yield its fruits, and you will eat your fill and live there in safety you may ask what will we eat in the seventh year if we do not plant or harvest our crops i will send you such a blessing in the sixth year that the land will yield enough for three years in verse 22 it says it says while you plant during the eighth year you will eat from the old crops and will continue to eat from it until the harvest of the ninth year comes in the land must not be sold permanently because the land is mine and you reside in my land as foreigners and strangers throughout the land that you hold as a possession you must provide for the redemption of the land if one of your fellow Israelites becomes poor and sells some of their property, their nearest relative is to come and redeem what they have sold. In verse 26, it says, If, however, there is no one to redeem it for them, but later as they prosper and acquire sufficient means, means to redeem it themselves, they are to determine the value for the years since they sold it and refund the balance to the one to whom they sold it. They can then go back to their own property, but if they do not acquire the means to repay, what was sold will remain in the possession of the buyer until the year of Jubilee. It will be returned in the Jubilee and they can then go back to their property. Anyone who sells a house in a walled city retains the right of redemption a full year after its sale. 
during that time the seller may redeem it if it is not redeemed before a full year had passed the house in the walled city shall belong permanently to the buyer and the buyer's descendants it is not to be returned in the jubilee but houses in villages without walls around them are to be considered as belongings to the open country they can be redeemed and they are to be returned in the jubilee the levites always have the right to redeem their houses in the levitical towns which they possess so the property of the levites is redeemable that is a house sold in any town they hold and it is to be returned in the jubilee because the houses in the towns of the levites are their property among the israelites but the pastoral land belonging to their towns must not be sold it is their permanent possession. In verse 35, it says, If any of your fellow Israelites become poor and are unable to support themselves among you, help them as you would a foreigner and stranger, so they can continue to live among you. Do not take interest or any profit from them, but fear your God, so that they may continue to live among you. You must not lend them money at interest or sell them food at a profit. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. In verse 39 it says, If any of your fellow Israelites become poor and sell themselves to you, do not make them work as slaves. They are to be treated as hired workers or temporary residents among you. They are to work for you until the year of Jubilee. Then they and their children are to be released and they will go back to their own clans and to the property of their ancestors. Because the Israelites are my servants whom I brought out of Egypt, they must not be sold as slaves. Do not rule over them ruthlessly, but fear your God. Your male and female slaves are to come from the nations around you. From them you may buy slaves. You may also buy some of the temporary residents living among you and members of their clans born in your country and they will become your property. You can bequeath them to your children as inherited property and can make them slaves for life. But you must not rule over your fellow Israelite ruthlessly. If a foreigner residing among you becomes rich and any of your fellow Israelite becomes poor and sell themselves to the foreigner or a member of the foreigner's clan, they retain the right of redemption after they have sold themselves. One of their relatives may redeem them, an uncle or a cousin or any blood relative in their clan may redeem them, or if they prosper, they may redeem themselves. They and their buyer are to count to the time from the year they sold themselves up to the year of Jubilee. The price for their release is to be based on the rate paid to a hired worker for that number of years. If many years remain, they must pay for their redemption a larger share of the price paid for them. If only a few years remain until the year of Jubilee, they are to compute that and pay for their redemption accordingly. They are to be treated as workers hired from year to year. You must see to it that those to whom they owe service do not rule over them ruthlessly. In verse 54, it says, even if someone is not redeemed in any of these ways, they and their children are to be released in the year of Jubilee. For the Israelites belong to me as servants. They are my servants whom I brought out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And that is the end of chapter 25. We honor it by saying thanks be to God for his holy words. Father God, we thank you for life. We thank you for your ability to redeem us, O oh God. We thank you, God, for the year of Jubilee. We thank you, O oh God, that you always make a way for us to escape out of all of our problems. And we thank you for all you do and have done in my life and the lives of the viewers and subscribers of this channel. We thank you, God, for all you do for us, O oh God, for the sacrifices you make to bring us, you have made to bring us closer to yourselves, God, and that you've given us access to you, to your love, to your grace, to your mercy. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. And remember, guys, just before you go, remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel and turn on the post notification bell. And let's see what's going to happen as we go um, deeper into the scriptures. Bye. See you next time. I'm Blade, and I'm cutting.